Hello friends, welcome. Today we've got a kit to build. This is a JYE Tech oscilloscope. It comes in two parts or you can buy each part separately. This is the oscilloscope and this I believe is the acrylic case for it. That's just plastic and nuts and bolts really but the main show is in here. You have two glossy manuals. This one says it's the user manual, but really it's the assembly manual and runs you through getting it all going, troubleshooting and diagnosing. And this one is actually the user manual and a very nice schematic on the back. I think this came in at, I don't know, I think it was $20 on offer for both parts. It comes in two styles of kit as depicted on the label here. The 1380 uh, 3k or the 4k. The 4k I believe is the DIY kit and it doesn't have these SMD components pre-mounted whereas the 3k does but the rest of it is all through hole. You get a nice LCD screen which almost looks as vibrant as an OLED but it is just LCD. Tools, soldering iron, screwdriver, solder, flush cutters, multimeter, tweezers, Got my trusty old fluke on hand because everything here there you go that's how your kit comes so it says meter the resistor values out before you actually put anything on uh, and certain components like I uh, say capacitors and the diodes and stuff need the correct polarity Always remember the long leg, you cut the bit off and the bit that you cut off makes a positive symbol when you overlay it. You know, I do a bit of electronics and stuff, but I'm by no means an expert. So yeah, we've got resistors, tactile buttons, switches, little headers, capacitor trimmers, normal headers we're quite used to. As a 9 volt input, you've probably seen the switch mode power supply video before this. Um, I've previously built like this variable switch power supply but it wasn't sort of sufficient for my needs. But something like this was a good project to build. I think this was only like about $10. And this might even power that. So I'm going to go through this and I'm going to bin it all out or null it and meter the resistors out to exactly what they need to be. I'll stick a time lapse on and a movie, I think. So that'll be coming up, I expect. So this is the module all soldered together and everything. Just about to go through the calibration. I've verified that it's all working. All this has been metered out. It's quite straightforward. Just make sure all your solder joints are perfect. Otherwise you might not get the screen initialised. You might not get the signal um, output and so forth. First things first. Attach probe to J1 which is this. This was the most awkward bit to do because it's a massive heatsink. So I've got this hooked up to my switch mode power supply and it should be outputting about 9 volts. So quite positive. Touch a red clip with your finger. Ah, oh, there we go, look. Okay, so. That seems to be working all right. Um, there is troubleshooting on this uh, if you need it, and they do have a forum on jyetech.com. So what I'm going to do is calibrate the probe. So we turn it on. This is sucking about what 100 milliamps, 110 milliamps at 9.3 volts. You can run this from 9 to 12 volts, but if you run it at 12 volts, the MCU might get a bit hot. This is going to be calibrated by these two trim pots. Sensitivity 1 to 0 0.1 which is that one. AC or DC on this one and then hook it up to the test signal and we should get a square waveform. Oh yeah. Okay. I don't know if you can pick it up on air. But if it's rounded at the edge it's not enough. If it's got a peak on it 
it's too much but if it's sort of a square wave it's good so I believe I've got too much on C4 which is this one there we go hopefully you can see that sloping off at the edge here that's cool uh, then we need to set it to 1 volt on sensitivity 1 and sensitivity 2 to X1 adjust C6 so that it's sharp rectangular waveform is displayed well I think this is quite rectangular so I'm going to call that good we're getting all the right signals and stuff uh, we're getting triggered down here I believe we can hold OK and we can get the exact frequency well it's straightforward really and if you want to take a snapshot of the wave you can do it by pressing OK and it'll sort of pause it on here you can press select and plus simultaneously and it should say save it there you go saving up there so if we disconnect this we should be able to recall that select and minus to recall it there you go look how cool is that and then just okay well that's about in a nutshell only thing left i suppose is put it in its case and test it on something else so put that together come back in a minute nice acrylic case installed goes together quite nicely all great so what I'm going to do is um, put this to some practical use which is for me receivers and so forth it's an easy way to test it out I got this bound up okay we're getting a signal on here there we go we have got the perfect signal okay that looks to be about one and a half milliseconds in centre which is correct 1500 uh, microseconds uh, generally you have 1000 on the low end and 2000 on the high end so let's turn left and this should shrink to one segment oh, okay we're there or thereabouts so turning right is taking it right down I may have these reversed and then full left so we're we're not getting you know the full 1000 uh, milliseconds microseconds milliseconds forget what we call it on this but it might be the endpoints on here take this up to 100 percent and we should get exactly what we need look at that and of course we're getting triggered we're not liberal snowflakes here so don't worry coming from an RC background that is very very indicative of the signals we want I don't know why it defaults on the end point to 60% but it's very telling so this is very very accurate and it's a breath of fresh air actually seeing everything correlate right let's have a look at the throttle channel okay full deflection minimal it is increasing a very slight amount on the voltage and what I really want to look at is seeing what channel 3 does on this if it's a momentary okay channel 3 is perfectly zero ah it's a toggle look on or off now that's perfectly handy for my blue truck I'm building where well, it's built but it has a orange beacon I'm putting on top that is controlled by a momentary switch or a toggle so you can switch through five modes so that is cool so that's how this works let's see if we've got a fail safe so full throttle transmitter goes missing and then we get no pulse whatsoever which is brilliant and then we're back that actually comes back on and reinitializes the signal very quickly right fail safe set full throttle 
signal goes missing and there we go haha -ha. oh this is giving you a little bit of an insight in what a home gamer oscilloscope can do for you i've got many uses for this but i'm always annoyed but i can't diagnose for the most part i enjoyed building this kit so it's been a learning experience getting to visualize what's happening with these signals is quite cool seeing where the problems lay with receivers transmitters and other uh, pieces of equipment very handy any questions about using a oscilloscope i'm probably not the best person to ask but i'll try and help out where i can um mj lawton has done a brilliant series on oscilloscopes even dave jones ev blog he's a great source for anything electrical and he's a good youtube channel as well thanks for watching see you later what is it? Yo, Fale. Hey!